some really with the uh, with the young children. Uh, the next session until lunchtime um, is going to be a, a really interesting one as well because we are now going to hear a few case studies of coach education for children's coaches. We really are going down to the ground to understand what uh, a number of organisations are doing to really help uh, with this issue of you know suitably qualified coaches. Our first speaker is Dr. Zoltan Marcinka. Did I pronounce that all right? Yeah. Uh, I couldn't sleep last night. I was <laughs> um, who is the sports director for the Hungarian Handball Federation, but he's also a, a highly reputed coach. Uh, he's coach at the professional level, at the Olympics, at the World Championships. So uh, I think that's a, a strength of the conference, really, where the people that we've got speaking at the conference are not stuck in an office. These are people that are on the ground doing coaching and I've been doing coaching for, for lots and lots of years, okay? So without further ado, I'm just gonna hand over to you. Thank you very much, Sultan. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much for a kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be here and share my experience. Although I'm sitting in the office now, but I used to be an active coach before. And congratulations also for a fellow speaker. Uh, he raised the bar very high for us. Thank you very much, you know, we try to jump it. And also we hope that the Belgian football success will be transferred to Hungary too, because now we got a head coach. It's a Belgian uh, national coach. So hopefully the next 15 years, too much. Tomorrow, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> we'll have the success. Um, maybe one area uh, when we're a little bit better than Belgium is handball, if you allow me. Uh, uh, my handball background, uh, as uh, Sergio said, you know, uh, was from previous experience, grassroots level also, I work with uh, ladies, also work with men at different levels. Uh, now I'm working with uh, coaching education and uh, we were really focus on the, on the youth level because sometimes you also mentioned it's a kind of tragedy, you know, to overthink things. And um, last Olympics, Hungary uh, was not uh, um, presented in handball and this didn't happen before because Hungary, at least, you know, the men or women's team was always at the Olympic. And then because we missed the qualification, we had to rethink about our future. And uh, definitely the next, next uh, short-term goal is to qualify for the next Olympics. But be looking at a little bit beyond that because, you know, handball enjoys not just popularity here in, in Hungary, but also good government support. So we have to utilize this opportunity and thinking about the future. So my presentation, a little bit shorter than it was before try to uh, introduce you uh, what we did in handball and what uh, kind of uh, coaching programs we having uh, in terms of developing uh, handball at the youth level. Uh, I assume not everybody knows the game. Please put your hands up if you know handball. Okay, so for those who's coming from other countries when handball is not so popular, I would like to start with a little trailer so you can see what we're going to talk about in the next 20 minutes. you developed a little bit of taste for it even if you didn't know handball uh, just staying with the figures I would like to show you the magnitude of handball not so much to remember the uh, the numbers but just to show you know uh, the popularity of the game itself 
We got 204 um, handball nations uh, playing uh, all around the world in all the continents. Mostly European game, but uh, the handball spread also to the other continents, we should say. And just by having a look at the number of the teams, you know, we really can say that uh, handball is uh, really a vast sport. Uh, over 20 million uh, handball players we have all around the world, and of course the officials and uh, those who's helping the game also involved, so we can say that uh, handball perhaps uh, second, third, fourth uh, most popular team sport uh, at the world. Uh, just a little bit about Hungary because it's very important to understand, you know, why in uh, why, why handball uh, uh, development is so important for us. We got you can say more than uh, more than 1,000 clubs and nearly 600 is full member. It means that they're playing in our competitions under the uh, control of Hungarian Handball Federation. I would like to point it out that uh, the number of youth teams are really great and also the players raising actually in the last 15 years is doubled. As I mentioned, we got very good uh, government support, so we try to utilize this opportunity also. Many officials, of course, uh, and referees are involved in the game. And this is a very good number for us because yearly we got 140, 150 handball matches on Hungarian TV. It means that basically every third day you are able to watch uh, the match. It's also a great responsibility for us because we have to make sure that the next generation will bring back the same quality also. You can see uh, the TV viewers, this is a full match. If somebody is watching the full match, is registered so more than 200,000 people watching the matches average want, uh, once uh, handball in the domestic competition. <coughs> areas of support, uh, uh, I would like to show you three major areas where youth handball and youth development is really important for Hungarian Handball Federation. As I mentioned before, we had a strategic change a little bit into the approach of the youth development. We have a handball at school program, I will talk about shortly. Also, we got a youth development program, mostly focusing on clubs. And we got also the coaching education program, which is a tailor-made system for youth coaches. Starting with the uh, uh, youth development, the first magic, uh, magic word, if I can say this, was to try to achieve that every school has at least some knowledge about handball, or we can provide some opportunities for them to play the game. Uh, Hungarian Handball Federation made up a kit which was two modified goals, some we called it sponge ball, very bouncy ball, and we tried to uh, actually simplify the games to bring them in the school because it's very important that, uh, that PE teachers are actually very handy with the game. So we, we're far away from this one yet, but perhaps on this journey you will see that we are uh, at least on halfway or maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, the program supervisor is one of my colleagues at uh, Hungarian Handball Federation. You will see he's got a great expertise in youth development. And I would like to just highlight a few facts uh, which we're working on. We thought it's very important to work on the network of the teachers and schools because once we have a good, well-developed network, we can approach them, we can feed them with material, also we can get some feedback from them. As we saw in, a, in the Belgium model, it's very important, you know, to have the coaches and everybody's pulling the, let's say, kochi at the right direction. Uh, supervising a mentoring system is more a quality kind of control and also providing uh, uh, usable in information for the coaches. Very important liaising with the government bodies because as I mentioned uh, before, Hungary enjoys a good uh, government support, but we have to be very clever, you know, how to use this because we're going to be accountable in, in the future for this. In servicing teachers is very important part of it. He's an, uh, because uh, teachers, PE teachers can bring the sport, you know, to the kids very, very close. Also, so-called school handball festivals important to maintain the fun part of the game. Fun part of the game. That's why we have, for example, this logo here. It's called handball at school. That was designed by the kids, and called this one party, which is, if I can translate, bouncy. They like to have this logo, they design it, they organize it, they're familiar with it. Um, he, you can see the map of, the, of Hungary, and you can see uh, one area of the network and the supervising of the mentoring system, how it takes shape in the country. Uh, we got five regions now. Uh, the regions are uh, actually led by uh, supervisor, full-time officers from the Hungarian Handball Federation, fully funded, and their job is 
to go and have a look at uh, those schools uh, when they are in the program and also get some feedback for the technical director providing teaching material for them, organizing competition. Basically, they are the extending hands of Hungarian Handball Federation. If you want to put it in pictures, we got 100 in schools. It started with five, uh, 50 schools, actually, a few years ago. Now we got m more than uh, 4,900 uh, children playing in the program, and we could uh, reach 164 teachers which is uh, also very important for us. The teachers also paid, uh, not with a large amount of money, but at least, you know, with the, with the PE wages is not so big here in Hungary, so a little bit of help financially also uh, encourages the, the teachers to teach handball. I uh, just showed the growth of the problem, uh, the program. Uh, actually, we started with 50 schools. It was a pilot project and it was very successful at the beginning. So slowly we could uh, raise the number of the schools uh, were involved in the program. Also, with the number of the schools, the number of the children also developed. Uh, P teachers, they are the best ambassadors. We believe that the P teachers has the access to the kids, which is very important. Access to the handball halls and the facilities in the schools. So it's very important that we're targeting those uh, teachers who can really put them together and put their expertise into the game. Uh, if you have a look at the number of visits was the mentors or so-called supervisors uh, uh, achieved in the last few years, we can say that it's also it's significant. 457 visits uh, a year by five supervisors, it's a large number. So that gives us a, a very good coverage in Hungary. We're not thinking about that this should be extended because basically we reached every area. One philosophy was that there's no white spots in Hungary in terms of handball. We achieved this one. Now we try to work on the quality department. Just a couple uh, numbers once again. Between 2015 and 2017, we have 465 uh, school children were signed up clubs. This is also a good continuation because, as we mentioned, also we saw in the Belgium model, we don't want to lose children. We want to provide them a pathway. Once they finish in school, they are able to go and play handball again at the club level. It's very significant, and also this player spent at least two and a half years in the handball at school development program, providing them very good basic skills uh, at uh, that level. Handball helps. First, I put here heels, but my wife, uh, who's got better English than myself, he said, heels is not a good word because you heal people, okay, like, like the doctors do, but for me, it would come very handy, handball helps uh, to heal. Because sometimes, emotionally, uh, the game, sport, can so much to the children that even the doctor cannot do. So we got special needs children here. We targeted the schools where handball can be a kind of force for the children to come together, pay, play, communicate, open up a little bit and try to solve the social issues or the emotional problems. I think it's very important for us that we're looking after not just those children who can be professional athletes, but also those children, you know, who handball can be a coach for them uh, to, to, to carry through in life. Also, as I mentioned, it's very important to use the opportunities what the government gave us, liaising with government bodies, bodies and it's important part. Every kind of program needs a kind of foundation, you know, so this is most of the areas when the funding is coming. Handball uh, were successfully put in the school curriculum for 2017 to 2022. Handball can be can be thought at the primary uh, level. It's a compulsory study. Uh, so we have an access in the PE teachers. They want to teach handball. They can actually part of the school curriculum. And we're hoping that not just in the PE lessons, but also in the afternoon lessons, they're also going to teach handball. Uh, you can see uh, something very important to liaise with the right, right bodies. Hungarian Handball Federation, the Hungarian School Sports Association, and the rector of the Hungarian uh, University of Sport and Physical Education. This is a very good so-called triumviratus because Hungarian Handball Federation can rely on the teaching, okay? They will provide us the teachers 
who will carry on the game, and also the Hungarian uh, School Handball Association uh, uh, provide us the funding and also their network so that we can develop handball a little bit in the larger area. As part of this also, uh, we try to utilize the, uh, any kind of innovation the Hungarian uh, uh, government gives us, so we also try to be part of in different uh, projects. In servicing teachers, it's a very important part, and now we're coming a little bit closer to my area, because passing on the knowledge, it's very important. Uh, opposite to Belgium, we try to uh, teach the student, or let's say children, at a very young age. Handball is a little bit different. It's smaller, it's a more content game, like in football, played in indoor. So we have, I think, better facilities, you know, to start with them a little bit earlier with the skill development. But very similar to, uh, to uh, Belgium, we're not playing handball with them all the time. So it's called mini handball, what we play at first, five years, six years, seven years, using a very fine sponge ball. And apart from handball, we're playing many, many different games. So it's more a motor skill development, movement coordination, and really, uh, really focusing on the fun part of it. So um, the Hungarian uh, School Sports Association uh, gives us uh, the opportunity that in Hungary, the P teachers, the physical education teachers, have to go through some kind of compulsory in-services. It's called the 30 hours uh, compulsory in-service. And we were able to fulfill these 30 hours with handball. And it was a great opportunity for us if the PE teacher has to go to renew, let's say, his coaching license, uh, let him or let them to, to, to teach handball. It was very, very successful because at least, you know, they can come to a kind of course which is their interest. Also, Hungary Handball Federation had a purpose to win more people for the game. As I told you, they are best ambassadors for us. If they like the game, they're going to teach it also at school. So uh, we funded 115 places for this coaching in service. They came in after school activities, 30 hours. In 30 hours, we teach them enough handball so they can start at the grassroots development level. Many schools, you can see 15, uh, uh, 1,500 schools, you know, we participated just as many teachers. And basically, this program is still going on. In this autumn, we had 467 applicants. Altogether, in the recent years, we could reach more than 2,000 school teachers. I think it's a great number for the size of Hungary. And 2,000 uh, school teachers you know, can teach another, let's say, 10 kids each. It's a very good number for us. You can see mostly primary teachers and mostly year one to year four. They needed a special skill because they didn't learn it, you know, let's say in the coaching education or in the, in the peer uh, education department. But having this 30 hours course, you know, they can be uh, uh, provided with some information. School Handball Festival, it's a very successful project uh, of this uh, early development uh, plan. Once again, uh, this aiming at to have the fun part of the uh, handball highlighted and not so much at the competition. Uh, you can see the colors. It also suggests that it's a kind of festival. Few numbers I would like to uh, highlight for you. We got three festivals a year in different regions and they can come and everything is free for the kids. It's a weekend. Usually they play on two days on one side, four matches per two days. So at least, you know, they have a good run up. Six to uh, six courts we usually we use. 130 teams in last year and more than 564 matches. We involved uh, also young children and sometimes two, three years old children referring for the age group below. Uh, we find it that uh, they are more familiar with the game and the kids expect them better, accept them better than actually the uh, referees. Um, just a few pictures to have an idea of the game. 465 uh, boys, also eight, uh, close to uh, 700 girls were playing uh, the game and 55, 60 officials. Most importantly, when we have these carnivals, handball carnivals, no scores, so we're not counting the scores. When they have the match, yes, because it's also part of the learning, but after that, it's become zero, zero. 
So we never announced who won this big festival, 150 kids, uh, teams turning up actually, but they never asked for, you know, who won it. They had a good time. We have after handball activities like playgrounds, jumping castles, they're going to Lake Balaton, then they have a swim in the summertime when they have that. So apart from handball, they're playing also other games, which also has the coordination, a little bit uh, a preparation for handball, but mostly for the, for the, for the social, social network. Lots of fun, we highlight this. A uh, little bit about the youth development program. Objectives uh, you can read up. Uh, basically, it's a very new program for us because we find that just to bring handball in the school is not enough. When they finish the handball uh, at the school, usually there is a gap, either changing place or they changing ideas, sometimes sports. So we have to provide them the pathways also to go to clubs. And this mostly focusing on clubs the youth development program. You see the objective and I can see what we can provide them. Professional teaching material, it's very important. They're growing up a little bit, now they're uh, 14 years of age. Technical supervis uh, supervision and also we provide them an e-site, a website for database. How does it work? Okay. Concept, same philosophy as we heard, you know, from the basic. We had to, after the Olympics, decide, you know, how we're going to develop handball players to get from the grassroots here so that we are playing handball at the Olympic uh, Games again. And this is, as you can see, is a long path. Sometimes it's a very rocky road. Uh, but if we step over uh, certain age categories, we're not doing the right way. So we developed a system that from mini handball through youth handball, junior handball, you can reach uh, adult handball with the philosophy that you have to nurture young players through a long-term development program, which is built upon a systematic work of different age uh, categories. So this is the basic philosophy of this program and how we uh, doing it. You can see this is a Hungarian map again, and you can see the counties. Network is also important, so we don't lose out of sight of these uh, children who are playing handball. So we developed a system where the technical director, actually, who is sitting in the Hungarian Handball Federation's office, sometimes also visiting and going out to places, can somehow monitor the development of these areas. So uh, we can do it on the online system. Sometimes, of course, practical uh, education is necessary, but most of the time you can share material through the web. So we got 22 country supervisor who's reporting for the technical director. Altogether, this 22 country supervisor uh, visiting 358 clubs is a large number. And if you have a look at the number of the teams, it's even larger. Of course, they cannot cover on a daily basis uh, these clubs and teams but every team and every coach has to put down a weekly and a monthly preparation plan. We will see this in the next slide. I have to leave it uh, speed it up because Sergio already gave me a warning. So, <laughs> so uh, every coach has to, do, uh, uh, has to design a preparation plan monthly and weekly, upload it to the net so the supervisor can check it. Also have to uh, fill up the coaching diary, uh, the diary after the training session up until midnight. If midnight is not uploaded and the supervisor doesn't know what happened, you know, during the day, it's going to be penalized. Testing protocol is also important and they can, they can do this one because they are going out to the schools. Testing protocol, we're looking at motor abilities to collating some data about the development of the children. Also technical skills, which is up to the teacher or up to the supervisor. Individually, he can mark or she can mark it from one to five. Also tactical knowledge, it's important to know. Later on, we will believe that we will have a pool of data and we can perhaps use this data in the future to see you know, how successful or how not successful the program is. Uh, just a little bit going back to the previous slide. You, hear, you can see here what's the duties actually of the supervisors. They can give a professional and IT help to the coaches at the grassroots development. They maintaining a contact, of course, with the clubs and the coaches, reporting to the tactical, technical director, transferring the knowledges, and also put some kind of control on the coaching work. Okay, 
finally, last area is my area, so I'm a little bit more familiar with this. Coaching education has the, uh, uh, probably I should say, responsibility to feed all these programs with material. Because when we have a good network and we establish a good contact with the, with the schools, we also have to give them updated and more, uh, more renewed material. I lead this education department. We have our own uh, International Coaching Education Center, which is located within the Hungarian Handball Federation as a, a little bit of island in the Federation. Uh, we're supporting coaches with tailor-made coaching education structure, specialized for level one and level two. We will uh, see in, a, in the next minute. Uh, specialized courses, uh, conferences and in-services, teaching material, as I mentioned, is a big part of our activities. Also, we got a very well-developed uh, website uh, for the coaches. Something about the education center, I'm just putting it up. You can see we're doing different coaching courses apart from level one and level two is dealing particularly with the youth. And then we also doing specialized courses like goalkeeper trainer or conditioner trainer or therapist, of course, regional and national uh, in services. And we're doing some kind of uh, retraining courses for those coaches who we think they're not satisfactory at the level we need to. Uh, just uh, as a final couple of slides, I would like to show you our, uh, our progress. Uh, we came to the conclusion that coaching education must go back where it is the best at the universities when they do P teacher education. So we signed a contract with six universities where they actually develop uh, P teachers. And uh, apart from PT teaching and the subject, according to our curriculum uh, and our syllabus, they're going to teach also handball. Now, for example, in Sombat Hay uh, or in Page or the other country uh, sites, you can see we got level one and level two courses. In this moment, our coaching education uh, center have in the six centers also 174 participants. It's a kind of e-learning, blended learning and also practical work. We wanted to bring the education close to the coaches and not to be centralized. In this way, you know, we can make it more accessible for them a little bit less traveling time, less money, and we have to make sure, and this is a quality control part, uh, uh, it's very difficult for us, but manageable, that everywhere they're teaching the same kind of uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, we made the same curriculum for handball, for different universities, and also we rely on the university teachers, which provide us the good quality of the uh, other studies apart from handball. Uh, in teaching material, I would like to just show you one uh, example. Uh, we made this book uh, just half a year ago, which is aiming at uh, to give some coaching advices from 6 to 18 years of age. It's mean that in every page it's broken down for different age categories. When you got uh, methodology, theory of coaching, methodological advice, exercise collection, more than 200 exercises, we will see one in the last slide. Also some kind of uh, knowledge test and talent identification and the national team selection to show the path for the players and the coaches, how they can get into the national team through a very carefully processed selection procedure. Uh, also, we got a website which we don't have uh, time to show. Uh, also, we providing uh, all the thesis what so far uh, our students, you know, put it through. So the better resource for the coaches, organizing conferences, of course, and we put on the materials. We got eBooks, just like uh, what I showed before. It's also in the e-learning process. Selecting articles. Also, we try to uh, help with the. Hungarian coaches who's going abroad to give some learning language aid, you know, for their study. And finally, and thank you very much for being so patient with me, I would like to show just one clip. That's one exclusion. Actually, as I showed you the book before, we're not just making a book in a book format, but also e-books. And in e-books, we are able to show exercises for uh, P teachers and uh, coaching at young level. Of course, it's Hungarian. Inside the book, you can see the picture of the exercise and the description of it. And next to the exercise, it's a linked a video clip so that the coaches can see the actions.
and page references so everybody can go back to the book and see what page is and also we mentioned who made that on this note i thank you very much for your attention i uh, I'm a little bit envy you because you have a bit more time than me. Uh, but uh, those uh, who have a little bit uh, more interest and would like to know more about the system, very happy to, uh, to share my knowledge and opinion with them. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.